Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of your OGR, as today we got game 18 as the Edmonton Oilers went up against the Vegas Golden Knights and won 4-3 with a big overtime winner with Connor McDavid scoring an absolutely beautiful goal to cap it off in overtime. Uh, honestly, we played a pretty good game, probably one of our best games that we have seen in quite a bit. But the thing is, can we continue to keep this up will be the big question. But before we get into talking about this team and uh, getting into talking about this game, I'd like to just say, if you are new to the channel, make sure to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button as well. It'll be very much appreciated there, boys. So, let's get into this one here with the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, as uh, this game, like I said, it was a pretty entertaining game. The Edmonton Oilers finally brought their A game. Of course, when me and Perlo did a live stream, I wasn't paying attention too much to this game because it was a late game at 8 p.m. on a day where I was working my ass off at work. So we're, I did pay attention to a decent amount where I'll be able to, uh, you know, dissect the game a little bit. But uh, there's a few things that I want to talk about. Uh, we had Matthias Janmark up on the top line, which I wasn't a huge fan of. Uh, now, overall, that was probably one of our better lines throughout the night. Like, McDavid and Hyman did a really good job getting some energy going, getting some offense going. Yanmar did a not too bad of a job of moving the puck around, creating some chaos. So I didn't mind Yanmar. I just think somebody else could do a lot better, like a Clem Costin. I've really been enjoying Costin's game. Uh, Costin has been really amazing, you know, banging bodies out there, uh, going and generating some offense as well. He's been kind of one of my favorite players on the ice in the past few days, but let's get into the goal scoring summary here as uh, Warren Fogel, Fog Daddy, baby, gets his third goal of the season for the Edmonton Oilers by a beautiful setup pass by Nuge, sent him up right in front of the net. Now, it was a really good setup play that we had some really good puck movement going. Uh, we set up Fogel right in front of the net to bury his third of the season, and it was just great puck movement. And that was the biggest thing that I've been complaining about with this team is our puck movement. We need to move the puck a lot more. We need to skate a lot more. We just need to, you know, create some space by moving around. And we were actually able to do that. You know, we weren't staying to the outside on the corners of the boards and not moving anywhere. We were actually moving in, in the middle. We were, you know, kind of pulling defensive towards us, which is absolutely what we need to do. And what we were doing here tonight was exactly that. And we were playing really, really well and uh, really well offensively, which is the reason why we beat the Vegas Golden Knights here. Uh, then right after that, Keegan Kolasar got his third goal of the season. Nice shot in the point by Theodore. It was kind of a weird one. Uh, bounced right off of Kolasar and right over Stuart Skinner, which also, to note, had a bloody amazing game. But uh, that one kind of twirled into the back of the net for the Vegas Golden Knights to get the game tied up at one. And then going into the second period, we have Mark Stone getting his sixth goal of the season for the Vegas Golden Knights to give them a 2-1 lead. Uh, this was a penalty shot, unfortunately. Uh, Ryan Murray uh, tripped up or hooked. Uh, Mark Stone, which gave, uh, you know, Mark Stone a uh, penalty shot because he was on a breakaway. So, of course, when he came up, he sniped it right through the five hole of Stuart Skinner and getting his, himself his sixth goal of the season, which was super unfortunate here for the Oilers. You know, we fell down two to one. We've been playing really good. Uh, you know, the Vegas Golden Knights were kind of battling back in that start of the second period. I thought they were looking really good playing even better than the Emmett and Oilers, I thought the Vegas Golden Knights had a really strong second period where the Oilers played probably one of the best first periods that we've seen in a bit. The Emmett and Oilers were dominating until the second period where the Vegas Golden Knights kind of took back that a little bit. But do not worry, Leon Drysaddle with about uh, 10 minutes remaining in the in the second period of action. He caps home his 10th of the season with a, just an absolute lightning bolt of a shot. Sniping and right on the back of the net for the Emmett and Oilers to get his 10th of the season uh, to tie the game up at 2. And then as we go into the third period, this is where the Edmonton Oilers really took over. Zach Hyman buries his ninth goal of the season by a beautiful setup pass by Connor McDavid. Sent up Zach Hyman for his ninth on the power play. But then right after that, Mark Stone buries his seventh of the season by a beautiful snipe. Uh, they were just moving the puck really well. Nothing really, really you could do there. Uh, they were just moving the puck around. And, uh, you know, McLeod it couldn't. Or I think, what, what line was that? I think it was... Not the McLeod line, because the McLeod line was out there for that fluke goal that happened. I think it was... I think it was the Fogel new... Yeah, I think it was Fogel dry settle Nuge was out there for that goal against. Um, but in general, that... I mean, what are you supposed to do? They were moving the puck really well. We weren't able to get it out, which was the biggest problem. We weren't able to get it out of the zone. And it got kept in there. Mark Stone was able to snipe home his seventh. But do not worry. We go into overtime and Connor McDavid caps over an overtime winner, baby. 
And this was a gorgeous goal. Connor McDavid gets a nice pass by Donald Nurse. He turns a corner and just fucking races like a race car towards the front of the net and then backhands it right into the back of the net, going Bardowski. And there you go. The Edmonton Oilers win 4 to 3 in overtime. And a pretty exciting way to end off the game. This was actually a really entertaining game, to be quite fair. It was really nice. It was a really fun game to watch. Uh, it, it was a lot of fun. You know, this game was really entertaining. Um, there's still a few things I think we need to work on, especially. And we need to stay up with this consistent type of play where, you know, we bring our A game every single game. And, and not just play sloppy like we do on most nights. Um, especially this upcoming week where we're going to have to go up against the New Jersey Devils, right? Where we're going to have to go up against a team that is winning 12 straight right now. And of course, on my power rankings in the podcast, they're second in the power rankings, most likely will be top in the power rankings. This is a red hot team that we're going to be having to go up against on Monday. Uh, and it's going to be a very hard team. So the biggest thing for us to continue to do is continue to bring our A game because that's definitely something we're going to need to do against the New Jersey Devils if we're going to be wanting to beat a team that has 12 wins in a row. Uh, so I think that's going to be a big challenge for us, but I do believe the Edmonton Oilers will be able to do it. So let's get into talking about a few players here. Uh, I'm going to start off with Dylan Holloway uh, because I think what they're doing to Dylan Holloway is not correct. I don't know why the hell they're continuing to keep Dylan Holloway up in the NHL. He's played in overall 14 games. He's just not getting enough ice time. Quite honestly, he got a great you know amount of ice time against Carolina, but Panthers he's only got you know almost seven minutes. LA got eight minutes, and in this game against the Vegas Golden Knights, he only got four minutes and none in the third period of action, which I think is criminal. Like you got to be playing this guy a lot more if we're gonna want to develop him. He's not really doing too much out there. I, I think for the best bet for Dylan Holloway right now is to send him down to the AHL where we can just call up somebody else to play in his spot. Or, you know, Yamamoto. But I think Yamamoto's been injured right lately. I think that's why we haven't played Yamamoto lately. Um, it's because he has an injury. I think that's what it is. But it's undisclosed what it is. Uh, but with Yamamoto or with uh, Holloway, I just don't, you know, playing him four minutes per game is not going to help his development, to be quite honest. Uh, it's not going to help him. And especially playing with Shore and Ryan, that's not going to help his development at all. He's not going to be able to really figure out how to play with fucking those two guys. Like, come on now. So I think for the Holloway, and I've, I've been saying it a lot throughout these episodes because, you know, playing a young rookie four minutes per game is not going to let him develop at all. It's not going to hone his skills. Yeah, sure, he might be able to practice with, you know, the big stars and stuff like that, but he's not going to be able to get those reps in game. And I think that'll be better off for him to be sent down to the AHL, let him develop for another year, and then he could come back up maybe later on in the season when he's red and hot and uh, not cold like he is right now. So I think Holloway should definitely go back down to the AHL. And we see him make a little mistakes here and there. So I think if we're not going to play him, you know, top nine minutes, then let's send him down to the AHL because that'll be the best for his development without a doubt. Uh, then uh, we'll talk about Matthias Yamark, who uh, was up on the top line. I thought it was a really weird decision. I didn't mind it because it was one of our better lines between McDavid, Hyman, and Yanmark, but I just wasn't a big fan of Yanmark. Uh, McDavid and Hyman, I thought, played pretty well, but I don't know. Yanmark moved the puck around. He did some good stuff out there, but I, I wouldn't pick him to be on my top line, to be quite honest with you. Uh, you know, Costin or Pulley RV would be my other two choices, but we just don't have a lot of guys that have been able to finish. And I think that's why we're massively missing Evander Kane right now, um, that we don't have another guy that's going to be able to finish these chances. So it's definitely a big miss right now, but the Yanmark wasn't too bad. We'll have to see how he does in another game, uh, because I thought that line was one of our better lines throughout the night. And another line that I really enjoyed throughout the night was Fogel, Drysaddle, and Nuge. Um, another line that I didn't mind. Uh, this was a line that they brought a lot of offense, played pretty well defensively, and I thought they played really well throughout the night. And uh, Costin, McLeod, Pugliarvi, I thought they played really well as well. Costin has been one of my favorite players uh, since we called him up. I've been really enjoying him. I know he hasn't gotten any offense going, uh, but he's banging bodies. He's playing really physical. I, I think once he gets that offense going, he could be a really big contributor. Uh, I've been really enjoying how they've been playing him up on the third line. He continues to get more shifts every single game and I think he really deserves it because he's a pretty good damn player out there and he's producing a lot of offense playing really good uh, I've been a really big fan of Costin as well 
Defensively, uh, Nurse and CC had a pretty good night. I thought this was one of their better nights where they played really well defensively. I didn't notice any big mistakes between those two guys. They were doing a really good job of defending against the big high players in Stone and Eichel and William Carlson. I, I thought they did a pretty good job. Uh, the best they could do for CC at least. Uh, Kulak Bouchard, I thought they had a really good night. They were generating a lot of offense, uh, and they played really well defensively. Murray, Barry, I'm not a big fan of Murray still. Uh, seeing him make a few mistakes throughout the night. I, I wish we don't have Ryan Murray on the team, to be quite honest, but it's either him or Nemalainen, and maybe we try Broberg again, but I don't know, man. It's a, it's kind of a sketchy defensive pairing between Murray and Barry. Uh, they're not the greatest defensive pairing in the world. Uh, and then also Stuart Skinner was absolutely amazing last night for the Edmonton Oilers. He did incredible, uh, making 31 out of the 34 stops for the Edmonton Oilers with a 9-12 save percentage. He played incredible. Uh, back on Yamark again, though. Uh, Yamark didn't play terrible, now thinking of it. Uh, I, I just don't want him up on the top line. I just don't think he's a top line guy that's going to be able to play 17 minutes per game, to be quite honest with you. I think there's better players out there on the team that could play a little bit more minutes than Yamark. Uh, to be quite fair. Uh, and then also, another thing to point out, the PK has been doing really well for the Edmonton Oilers over the last few games. Uh, we did really well against the uh, LA Kings on the PK that night, and we were flawless against the Vegas Golden Knights on the PK as well. So that's something to note. We're doing a lot better on our PK. We're able to kill off penalties, and that's a big thing because we're going to get scored on a lot during our 5-on-5 five -five play. That's just pure and simple. We're going to get scored on a lot, but if we're able to play really well defensively on the PK, that's something that can help us tremendously, uh, so that's gonna definitely going to be a big help moving forward. But for now, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Adios, amigos.